on film. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. It's Monday morning at 10 o'clock rock. And uh, this is Community Matters, if you didn't know. And we have a special guest, Carol Cox. He's an environmental watchdog. And he's going to talk about some city issues here in Honolulu, city and county of Honolulu. Uh, and some very interesting things have popped out to his attention. Um, he's kind of an investigative reporter, I think, on these issues. Welcome to the show, Carol. Thank you, Jay. Thanks. N nice of you to be here. Yes, sir. So let's let's talk first about the zoo. You mentioned there were issues about the zoo, its funding, and the de the departure of its director. Right. Well, we know that Dr. Baird Fleming is uh, notified everyone that he's departing or leaving. He's quitting, taking a job in Albuquerque, New Mexico. But uh, there was a Prop Nine or a Com Amendment Nine, Constitutional Amendment Nine that the on city the ballot on the November. ballot in November of 8th. And uh, what we learned now through emails that we got recovered on the UIPA of FOIA, the, we learned that he had met with the mayor on the 31st of October of this year to notify the mayor and his, dep his managing director, Roy Amamiya, that he was leaving, had intentions of leaving. That was October 31st. The public didn't learn of that until well after the election. And I believe that that was intentionally done. One might argue and say that it, does not, it was not done, but I believe that the benefit lay in the corner of the court of the mayor. So he withheld that information. Another interesting thing through reading and researching, and others have reported this, that the, uh, Mr. Fleming actually r removed his name from an Arkansas uh, zoo bid for a job there because he was concerned it made show that he was seeking a job. Mm -hmm. Now this comes on the heels now of the accreditation. In March of this year we lost the accreditation for the zoo. Why do we lose it? Because funding and the re revolving door so to speak. These are just a few of the things and some of the basic care of the animals but that's argumentative. But the reality is is that he was supposed to be preparing for accreditation that would be submitted in m March of this year, yeah. com of next year. Well, and now the spiral, that's in the air. It, if you don't have funding, you lose accreditation. If you lose accreditation, it's much harder to get funding, right? Yes, it is. But we were successful. The, the bill was passed. The amendment was passed. The taxpayer is going to, it's going to be taken from our property taxes, 0.5%. And then in turn, uh, they will manage the, the zoo. The problem is now they have to recruit a new manager. Yeah. And so these are some serious problems. And, and just one, how is this impacting the animals? There is one animal there, and I've talked about this, a hippopotamus named Louise, who remains with Rosie. There's uh, one died due to construction and, and uh, what have you. That's the allegations and the concerns that the work that was performed there caused the death of this animal, mm. contributed to the death mm. substantially. This animal, the remaining animal, has been in, enclosed in a private, sequestered area, blocked off from public interest of view for almost two years, and it's just sitting there. And these are social animals. The, f the display that is set up for the hippopotamus is, that they repaired is still not open. And the reports I'm getting now is that the work that costs approximately $3 million is not working. What do you mean not working? The filtration system. See, they built a new filtration system for the display, the hippopotamus display. That was the reason they... Because oh. uh, the water they were drinking was somehow contaminated right, by and the these construction. Are, yes. and Well, not contaminated, the noise. And mm. there are documents that we recovered in FOIA that say that the, there were challenges to the bid that said they didn't employ an acoustics professional. And so many of things, and it's grand, great details, but uh, for the purpose of this t discussion, it, I'll keep it limited. But it was about um, simply poor management. They, the necropsy that was done suggests that it may have been the stress from the work that was done. But meantime, all of the workers affiliated with that were warning the mayor and others that this was causing a problem and may contribute to the death, mm. and sure enough, it died. Mm. So what's the situation with the zoo now? Did the zoo amendment pass? The uh, amendment nine did pass. And uh, well now, as I say, it's complicated because what happens? You don't have a manager. 
And now rem reminding the public out there is that many of these animals that we have housed at the zoo are loners from other zoos. Mm -hmm. Now, we're concerned that the nearest date for possible accreditation will be in 2019. Wow. So why would the AZA or other zoos that have loaned these animals allow these animals to remain here in Honolulu? We're going to lose them if we're not accredited. Yeah. Right. And, well, it depends on the zoo that loaned them or the source that mm -hmm. loaned them. So there are many technical questions here that's presenting themselves on behalf of the, the zoo function and mm -hmm. what have you. And, and I think more than anything, the problem that I find with the zoo is lack of transparency and it's top heavy in, in management. We don't need that kind of money. The salary is $164,000. That wasn't enough to retain a, a veterinarian a doctor, a manager, then what will, right? Yeah. It doesn't sound like a zoo is going anywhere good, does it, Carol? No, and it has been habitually mismanaged. Uh, for yeah. the letter that on March of this year that during the revocation of the accreditation cites specific concerns that for three consecutive periods of five years, it has been woefully inadequate in some instances. Yeah. Too so, bad for a city of a million people, a state of 1.3. You know, I was uh, in September, I was in Portugal, in Lisbon, and I went to the zoo there in Lisbon. It was beautiful. It was beautiful in a country that's not very rich. Um, but this zoo is outstanding compared to what we have here. No comparison. They put so much effort into it. It was a lovely experience to be there. It's not a lovely experience to be at Honolulu Zoo. I'm sorry. I, I agree, and, and I advocate now for, if we are to keep a zoo, to privatize it and to some way take the mayor's control off of the monies because he, my biggest concern is that now that we'll have so much money uh, that we will see some of that money and these are my suspicions now i don't i haven't given any great studies to it but this money will be abused and diverted to other things and because it's there are there is no transparency yeah. with public let's go on to the next issue uh, and th this is the spill um sewage spill at uh, Coalina. What happened? Well, uh, about uh, the 30th of uh, November, a report came out that uh, there was a spill, M more than 1,000 gallons. Well, it was from the city. The report <laughs> came from the city. It came from the city in the press release. Problem with that, when, when you, it's suspect anyway, most of the, the spills that occur in Honolulu, especially at the hands of the city, tend to come out with a thousand gallons and, and that's suspect you know that old <laughs> magical thousand <laughs> so immediately a sewage spill is is of concern anyway for me and and many people so when a resort it's even greater concern because people are actually in contact with the water well here's the problem you mean the swimming water the swimming the water and it's not very far so we could yeah. migrate down through the streams or ditches or whatever depending on well, in this instance, they only reported 1,000 gallons, or, or slightly more. Days later, they finally reported that it was some 201,000 gallons. Well, well, I guess it's 1,000 <laughs> versus 201,000. Right. That <laughs> seems like pretty gross in, inaccuracy, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, and, 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 and unfortunately, we, many of the media people, don't take note of this because, give you a little... Uh, example of what the telltale signs that you can see that there's misrepresentation or basically a flat lie. That is, if you see a truck uh, congregating, trucks congregating, seven or eight of them, and some of them have 2,500 gallon tanks and some have 5,000 gallon tanks, you would think, and you see them load up, suck up, and move, you would think that just one truck would represent 5,000 gallons, so here you have five trucks working or seven trucks working, sucking it up, and then they report 1,000 gallons. It doesn't make sense, right? It makes sense. And, yeah. and if you multiply 5,000 gallons, well, if you divide five in, into uh, 200,000, my goodness gracious, that's, um, that's uh, oh my God, that's, uh, that's, that's a lot. That's, uh, that's going to be 40 times one truck. Well, now this has come also at the same time they're recruiting workers to work overtime. So a uh, thousand gallons wouldn't require seven trucks or eight trucks, vacuum trucks. Yeah. And here, here are some of the funny things of the calamity. 
uh, that seem to have taken place there. The workers, this is pro-workers now. I don't have first-hand knowledge, but they were accurate in their calling me and rip. And that is, the first response was they turned off the wrong valve. And this is when you made your inquiry. You, well, yes. This is the first response well, this you is, got. Well, no, no. This is the reporter. The workers that are there contacted me and told me that, you know, their res when they first responded, the responders turned off the wrong valve. Okay. Thinking that that would shut off the, the flow. It's a 20-inch main, force main. Well, it didn't stop. So they went back, turned on the right valve, turned on, and then started to suck it from one point, take it back up the hill, so to speak. It may have been downhill, but then that material would flow back down. So they were sucking up, repeating, sucking up the same material. That, so someone caught on. Now, again, I, I don't think that the city is going to openly admit this, but it, it sure makes a difference between 1,000 and 200 to 1,000. Transparency. That they admit now. And, and I have a rule of thumb. If the city generally say, it's 200,000, then you can add another 300,000. Because there's SCADA, there's a computerized system that tracks each pipe and where it's going and the volume going. And by now they know high use periods, morning times, evening times, and they're an approximate amount that would be contained in that line. Mm -hmm. And this line goes on the Pearl Harbor, I'm told by State Health Department, and into Honolulu Uli treatment plant. When did this happen? Our November 30th. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's and and um, common commonality here is that it took eight days uh, for Barrett Fleming to come out with his, that he was leaving, you know, the election. And, and then it take eight days for them to come out and admit that there was more than a thousand gallons. So it's kind of an interesting thing. The mayor has a, a rather curious behavior here eight and eight i guess <laughs> <laughs> well we have one and one we have we have one minute for a uh, a break we're gonna take a break now when we come back we're gonna talk about some more issues uh that's happening in the city um with carol uh, carol cox our uh, environmental watchdog we'll be right back Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stand the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday, here on Big Tech Hoi. I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., you'll have a chance to come and listen and learn from scientists around the world. Scientists who talk about their work in meaningful, easy to understand ways. And you'll come to appreciate science as a wonderful, way of thinking, way of knowing about the world. You'll learn interesting facts, interesting ideas. You'll be stimulated to think more. Please come join us every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii for Likeable Science with me, your host, Ethan Allen. Okay, we're back. We're live uh, with Carol Cox, environmental watchdog, talking about issues in and around the city and county of Honolulu. And for the third one to discuss this day, it's about leachate, L-E-A-C-H-A-T-E. -E. And we have had some leachate spills. What's the situation, Carol? Well, trash trucks traversing out of city and state highways and the roadways, private lanes, what have you. When a truck picks up trash, it contains, a portion of that trash contains liquids. Mm. And the definition of leachate basically is when water or other liquids are come in contact with municipal solid waste or garbage, it should be treated as leachate because like coffee, it percolates, the water percolating down extracts or washes out the chemicals or constituents of concern, heavy metals and what have you. So yeah, let's talk about what have you. I mean, you got heavy metals, you got all these um, organic materials, and that means bacteria. Bacteria. And, and poisons from household, uh, household chemicals and other chemicals. Many people are ill at home or nursing or baby diapers or all just kinds uh, of organic. pet litter yeah. uh, that is discarded in the yeah. municipal trash. And that is supposed to be heading to the H power, the burning facility, or the landfill, depending yeah. on the circumstances. What happens? Well. Uh, the trucks that are transporting this material, 
they are stored, and this is speaking of the city now, there are private truckers too that contribute to this as well. But the city, we're focusing now at KE Transfer Station and Kapa'a and Kauailoa uh, because they have these unique trucks, trucks that the fleet is now converting to what they call Keith flooring, walking floors. Mm -hmm. And these trucks then are not completely sealed. So when they scoop up the trash at the transfer station, which contains leachate and water mixed in, they load that up in a bucket and dump it in the truck, packs it, that truck then backs out spilling its load because it's draining. Truck is not waterproof. Not what it should be and there's a revised ordinance of Honolulu states that 9.2 states that it must be sealed and you shall not spill liquids onto the highways. For this very reason. For this very reason yeah. because at the landfill uh, they have to manage their leachate substantially and that's what caused the big problem when we had the leachate to flow into the ocean that substantial uh, medical waste and leachate that was oh, out there. Wow. So this is serious yeah. and it should be managed. Well, for some reason the state, Department of Health, and the city and county of Honolulu have this buddy-buddy deal. They have a permit called the NPDS permit. We'll just call it NPDS. And it's to manage stormwater. So they monitor and test the stormwater monthly. But here's the problem. They don't test for bacteria. This bacteria-laden water and contaminants that's in the water are dumped and dribbles onto the parking lot at KA Transfer Station. they don't test for bacteria. What do they test for if they're monitoring? Heavy the metals, because you see we're dealing with garbage and solid waste. Uh, are heavy metals dangerous by themselves? Yeah, mercury, lead, iron, uh, you know, cadmium, nickel, yeah. and Those things. Those are poison. They can be toxic and depending on individuals or the environment. So, yeah. But the sit situation here at Kehi, for example, dumps into, it drains into the lagoon that leads into the K lagoon out there where all the canoes and, and what have you, regatta that occurs. Where people touch the water. Yes, sir. Time. And it's and, and it presented a problem during our high storms or the heavy storms here. That, that's when it, this presented itself. But this occurs every day. Now, imagine driving behind a truck and you get this mist, but it's a bright, sunny day. And your, your windshield gets speckled with uh, droplets. It's not honeydew from heaven. It's a gift from the city and county of Honolulu's trash trucks. Yeah, and that stuff has got, well, it's got at least um, bacteria in it. It's got antigens for sure. Yes. Things you wouldn't want to breathe in or have on your skin. Right, and, and so we uh, have actually filed a complaint with the state health department asking them to immediately cause an inspection of all of the trucks that transport on the city yards, but we're also going to be asking for them to be more aggressive and enforcing on the private haulers as well, because sometimes I, I refer to them as snotty-nosed trucks. You actually can drive down the road and see them just dribbling, fluids just flowing out of the back of the trucks, and that's from the trash. It could be dead animals. It could be anything that people have discarded. Leachate. Leachate, yeah. So, um, question. Um, uh, what about the leachate that gets on the concrete of the drain? You, you talked about droplets getting on your windshield, mm -hmm. and I assume that means the droplets would get into your air conditioning system. And the air conditioning system is going to suck them up like the rest of the air around, and you're going to be breathing that in your car. Should you be following, um, you know, the, the garbage truck, and should the, those droplets come on your windshield or come into your car? But there's another thing, too, is that they... Uh, they, they drop on the concrete roadway mm -hmm. or the macadam roadway and now they're there and they dry and they form a kind of dust. What happens with that aspect of the leachate? Well, it could be left as spores or just left uh, clinging to the dust, that the dirt that's dry. But this is replenished every day and each tractor trailer truck might make four trips from Kehi Transfer Station to the H-Power. So it lay there just waiting, and if it dries up, you might see the moisture gone, but the contaminants are still there and present. And, it and they're just, in the air. And, and they're washing down and, and building up and caking up. And uh, much of this stuff is the grinds and uh, from the trucks, lubricants and all that, and the mud and the food waste and what have you. Just yesterday in Waikeli, I went and photographed a truck, a commercial hauler, 
whose truck broke down in the park now. Imagine having a picnic and having to smell trash. Well, this truck sat there all weekend, basically. Yesterday it was there, I photographed it. And you could see where the leachate had flowed out of the truck and running down. And so it'll be there in the park for some while. Mm -hmm. What about the EPA? You say you wrote to the state health department. Wouldn't the EPA, I'm, I'm not sure that Donald Trump's EPA is going to be the same as the uh, Obama EPA, but wouldn't the EPA be interested in this? Well, I, here's what I would say, uh, removing the names. I applaud uh, Donald Trump for even speaking to the fact that he would gut or modify the EPA. It is a waste of time, it's a waste of flesh, it's a waste of money. Uh, it's too big for its own good, but it never intended. It's just, a, it, it suggests that it's serving people, but how do you get a Detroit water drinking system developed if you have the big bad EPA? My professional experience is that the EPA, uh, Donald Trump and his efforts should eviscerate completely modified. We have people stepping over people in EPA with doctorate degrees and what have you. But for myself as an environmentalist who just naturally concerned, I'm not received well. I'm looked at as a sore thumb. That's but, interesting. Yes. And so I believe that I applaud, and not that I'm supporting Trump. I don't want to give that impression, you know. <laughs> but I do, you, you can see good in everything. <laughs> and I'm hoping that he stick to his guns on that. And, and it's not the Obama EPA. The EPA has been around uh, getting free handouts and presenting themselves as being this great savior of the environment. But there's a party going on here. The EPA covers for the state because the EPA grants the state the authority, adopts the authority to enforce federal laws or state laws or have similar laws. And then the state turns to the city and the city emulates the state and then we live in a hellhole or a sewage dump here called Hawaii, supposedly pristine and rare and irreplaceable. Mm. Thank you, Carol, for that. One, one last issue. Um, we have the Kehi, um, the Kehi dumping now of contaminants uh, and sewage. How does that how does that work? So, again, this facility is located, and you have storm drains built into the parking lot. So, what they've done now, these trucks are supposed to have a wash rack. They spent millions building wash racks. Many of them are not used. So, the men are actually washing by hand. They're supposed to go in and collect that material with the commercial hauler. That isn't done frequently or enough. Now the water puddles up outside, gets to a point and runs down the drain untreated, and it gets into the lake or the this river. leachate again. Leachate. And uh, just water, not just leachate, but also wastewater generated by the washing of the trucks and uh, the scrubbing and what have you. Which is another form of leachate. Yes, which is another form of leachate because ultimately it's some of it, much of it is going to roll into the trash trucks or to the pit. Mm -hmm. and, and there is another thing with, with this, how it happens is that front end loaders, huge tires. I just got pictures of this um, thick tracks. They deposit when they go into the hole. They deposit. That's why when you ask if that is leachate, I equate it to that because these tractors in, are actually bringing in on the tires and dumping it and depositing it on the So street. it goes down the drain, in, in a puddle, down the drain. <coughs> where does it go from there? Out to the ocean. Storm where people, drain. Where people sp uh, right. touch the water. Yes, and they can discharge. They have a permit. And as long as they manage it and monitor it, but uh, unbeknownst to me, and it came as a shock, the state health department says they do not m test or require them to test for bacteria. So how do you become aware of these things? Uh, people in the, in the government talk to you, you talk to the government, you go out and observe, you take pictures, and you educate yourself as to the environmental activities of the city and I suppose the state as well. Um, tell us about your mission and how you accomplish it. Um, I'm formally uh, I educated in natural resources, number one, management. And I was a game warden in California and a special agent for the Department of Interior, Fish and Wildlife Service. 
uh, and, and I have a love for the environment because this is our home. There's one planet, one opportunity, one chance to live here. That's what motivates me. When I see these behaviors, uh, we are taking money and people have learned to put themselves in places where they farm these jobs out or these tasks out and the taxpayer end up getting it. We as consumers get it. And also people, we own these lands as people. We come to expect that they are left clean and managed well. That's why we pay a person $160,000 a year. So what motivates me is that there are honest people in government. It is my experience that 99.9% .9 of the people working for government is honest and want to do the right thing. The problem is those few that do dare come out, they can be decapitated by the system and there's nothing whistleblowing or anything and will just eat them alive. So that's what motivated me. I serve as that conduit. Mm. The, the so-called alarmist, and that's what motivates me because it's a good thing, and doing good is just feel good. Yeah, you bet. So how can we read more about you? Have you got a newsletter or a website we, we need to know about? CarolCox.com, <clears throat> and uh, I have Facebook, Carol Cox, or the Carol Cox Show, uh, a radio show at Carol Cox, and it's at KWAI 1080 AM on Sunday mornings at 9 to 11 AM. And once in a while, Think Tech, too. Yes, sir. And I'm always happy to come back. Thank you, Carol. Great All to right. see you. Thank you. Aloha.